Hi, in this video I will show you how to make a bracelet. For this bracelet I will use lava stones, these black lava stones, and some metal beads. I have chosen different types of metal beads. Also use a toggle clasp um, besides uh, the beads uh, and the toggle clasp I will also need some findings and I have chosen for the end of my string these bead ends I will also need some crimps two crimps and some thread. I have chosen this nylon thread, black nylon thread. Uh, now that we um, now that we have talked about the um, findings and the beads Let's also talk about the tools. First of all, I will need some pliers and I've chosen these uh, chain nose pliers which have a, a pointed tip uh, so that I can work with small items such as those small findings. I will also need uh, a needle, a big eye beading needle. For the jump rings, I will need a jump ring opener for the thread I will need some scissors to cut the thread and I will also need the lighter in order to burn the end of the thread because it is nylon uh, the flame will melt the plastic and the knots for example will not open anymore so if you're ready let's begin with the bracelet First of all, let's talk about the uh, length of the thread. Um, I will measure around my wrist and as you can see, the length is uh, 6 inches. Let's see also in centimeters, it's about 15, 15 and a half centimeters. Therefore, I will need a thread that is longer. So let's see, I have chosen about 37 centimeters, that is about 14 inches and a, and a half. So that I can also make the knots and use the big eye beading needle. The first step is to make a knot at the end of my thread. I'll try to make a larger knot. because we use a, a bead end for the end of the cord and as you can see this bead end has this orifice here and the knot inside of this bead should be large enough so that it doesn't slip out through this I don't know if it's visible through this orifice here so as you can see the orifice is um, large enough so that a small knot would easily slip out through this hole here. So let's make the knot. If you want to make sure that the knot does not open, you can also use a pair of pliers. like this to make sure that the knot is not opening so let's make several knots
So I think we have enough knots here. And now I will put the thread on the big eye beading needle. Like this. And I will take one of those crimps and put it on the needle this way so I have brought the crimp next to the uh, knot I will take the pliers and press on our crimp like this so as you can see I pressed on the crimp the crimp stops the uh, knot from uh, slipping and now I think like this it's more visible so as you can see the crimp blocks the knot from slipping I will cut with the scissors the end of this thread and I will use the lighter to burn the end of this thread like this and now Again, I will put the thread into the needle and I will take the bead cap and I will put the bead cap on my needle like this and as you can see Let's see from a closer distance. Now you can see that the crimp together with the knot stops the thread from slipping out of the bead cap. Now the next step will be to take the pliers, the chain nose pliers, and close the bead cap like this I've closed the bead cap I will take a jump ring and uh, now the next step is to take some jump rings so I will take one jump ring open it so I will grab it with the pliers and I will open it with the jump ring opener this way and now I will put the jump ring through my bead end let's open it a bit more let's see if it works now like this so I have put the jump ring through my bead end and now let's put the toggle clasp and close the jump ring like this and the end of our bracelet is ready now the next step 
is the simple one we simply put the beads on our thread so all we have to do is take the beads and put them one by one on our thread the only thing that we have to take into consideration is to keep the symmetry so I will put the beads one by one so I will put a metal bead then a lava stone another metal bead another lava stone Uh, now let's put the uh, metal beads that will be in the middle. Now let's put the central metal bead like this. And as you can see, we have reached the middle of our bracelet. And from this point on, we simply have to take into consideration that the beads must be symmetrical. like this so this was the last bead so our bracelet the bracelet beads are ready now and now I will put the second bead cap whenever we put the second cap bead cap we have to take into consideration that the beads must not be too compressed so we must leave a bit of thread so that the beads can move they are not fixed stuck one to each other that um, so that but they must not uh, also not be too loose because if they are too loose then we will see the thread in between the beads And now, the first step will be to take the bead cap and open it, so that we can work in the middle of the bead cap. So with the second cap, it's uh, more important to have space here, so I will try to open it as much as I can, so that I can work in the inside of the bead cap. And I will put the bead cap on my needle, like this. And I will take a crimp and also put the crimp on the needle. And now I will remove the thread from the needle and put the needle away. Let's see from a closer distance, like this. So as you can see, what do we have here? We have the crimp, we have the bead cap, which is opened and the thread and now I will take the pliers the chain nose pliers and I will press on the crimp but so that I leave a bit of space to the beads for the beads to move so they must not be too close to each other and I will press on the crimp
and now as you can see I hope that it is visible I pressed I pressed on the crimp and the crimp is pressing on the thread so that the um, it blocks the movement of our bead cap so the bead cap will stop at the point where the crimp is because the crimp has been compressed and it presses on the thread now above the crimp I will make a few knots to make sure that the crimp does not slide and does not allow the thread to uh, does not allow the thread to slip out so you have to be careful this is why I opened the bead cap so that I can make the knots as close as possible to the crimp so that they are masked by the bead cap so I made one knot let's make sure that it's not opening and then I will make a few more knots So let's make one more knot. Now that we made several knots here, let's make sure that the knots are tight so that they don't open. And now I will take the scissors, cut the thread, take the lighter and burn the end of the thread like this. And now I can close the bead cap so that I cover the knot and the crimp which is inside let's take the pliers and close this bead end like this and now I will take the second jump ring And open the jump ring with the pliers and with the jump ring opener like this let's open it a bit more so hopefully it goes through the like this so it went through the bead cap I will also put the toggle clasp and close the jump ring like this so now I've closed the toggle clasp and let's close the bracelet and see what it looks like. Our finished bracelet. So this is what our finished bracelet looks like. And it le let's see also what it looks like on the wrist. So this is what the toggle clasp looks like and the bracelet. So this is the finished bracelet. I hope that you liked the video and that you know how to create a bracelet with toggle clasp and metal beads. Thank you for watching and I hope you liked the video. I will show you how to make a china bracelet using this, these porcelain, these china beads. 
I have chosen China beads with um, those uh, black decorations in the shape of flowers. And I also chose some beads that are black and they also have some flower decorations on their surface. I don't know if they are so easily visible. And I also chose this black metal, this uh, silver metal bead for the center of my bracelet. And um, besides uh, the beads, I will also use this bead cap for the end of the bracelet and some other types of bead caps for my beads. I will close the bracelet with this toggle clasp and we shall also need some findings. So. Um, I will use for the ends of my bracelet these bead caps which mask the knots and the crimps at the end of the bracelet. Some crimps. And of course the jump rings. So, um, if you uh, create handmade jewelry, the jump ring will be the finding that you will use the most uh, often. So, you use jump rings for all types, almost all uh, types of jewelry that you create. For bracelets, um, necklaces, anklets, uh, most of the, even for uh, earrings, all, almost all jewelry types require these uh, jump rings and of course we shall need some string some thread I chose some nylon thread black nylon thread um, and to assemble all these pieces we need the tools as tools I will use a pair of chain nose pliers as you can see they have a pointed tip so that I can grab small findings, small items with the pliers. For the jump rings, I will also use a jump ring opener or a second pair of pliers. Um, I will need a big eye beading needle for the beads, to put the beads on the thread. For small items, I can use a pair of pincers if I can't grab the findings with my uh, fingers and for the thread I will need a pair of scissors and a lighter. In order to know how long the bracelet should be I will use the measuring tape. So I have a measuring tape here which has both centimeters and inches. So these are the tools, the findings and the beads that I will use for the bracelet. So if you're ready, let's begin. The first step is to measure the length of the bracelet. So I will put the measuring tape around my wrist to see how long the bracelet should be. As you can see, it's 6 inches long, about 16 centimeters. If you make a bracelet for men, of course you can add one more inch or one inch and a half. It's always uh, useful if you know for whom you make the bracelet to measure the wrist so that the dimensions are as precise as possible. So um, let's begin with the thread. So if I had 6 inches the length of the bracelet like this, I will add a few more inches so that I can make all the knots and put the beads on the um, thread. So I have cut a bit of thread which is about 12 inches long, so about 30-31 centimeters long. Of course you can cut it shorter, but um, I... Uh, 
chose 12 inches so that I can have enough uh, thread to do all the operations of knotting and of putting the beads and so on. Uh, I will take the big eye beading needle. And the first step is to create a knot at the end of the thread. This knot will be masked by my bead end. As you can see, this bead uh, cap here at the end of my uh, bracelet has a hole here in the middle. So the knot that I create must not pass through this uh, orifice here. So it has to be larger than this orifice. Otherwise, the uh, thread will come out of the bead cap. So, in this case, I will make not one, but several knots to make sure that the knots do not open and that they are large enough to stop the thread from coming out. Beside the knot, you can also add something else and I will show you a safe method to make sure that the thread does not come out. So you can make uh, many knots like these so that they are large enough that they do not come out through this orifice of the bead uh, end. Let's say this is the knot that we have created. To make sure that this end does not open, I will burn it a little bit because it's nylon. It will melt and it will stick to the knot so that the knot has less chances to open. Then I will take the thread, put it on my big eye beading needle like this. You have to take into consideration that sometimes the thread can be uh, cut a little bit at the point where it goes through the needle because the needle is a bit sharp inside here. So it can sometimes cut the thread a little bit. So using more thread than necessary ensures that if the thread is damaged here, you can just cut it off. And now I will take one of those crimps and put it on the needle, on the thread and it will stop, as you can see, in my knot. So let's see from a closer distance. As you can see, I have the knot and the crimp has stopped right next to my knot. Now I will take the pliers and press on the crimp like this as you can see now I made the crimp flat this way and the crimp will prevent the thread from slipping out because we have this knot here and now we can put the the bead uh, and cap. So I will take the needle and I will take one of those bead caps like this and I will put the bead cap on my thread like this. And as you can see, let's see again from a closer distance, as you can see inside here we have the knot and the crimp because I pressed on the crimp, it has become flat and it is larger than the orifice of my bead uh, end, so it will not come out. So this thread will have very small chances to come out 
of this bead end. That means that we can now close the bead end. I will use the pliers to close the bead end. Like this. This way. And now, as you can see, the knot and the crimp are both masked inside my bead end here. And now we should add, uh, add the toggle clasp. I will take one of those jump rings. As I've told you, the jump rings are um, the most used type of finding in handmade jewelry. I've opened the jump ring. I will put it through the ring of my bead and like this and now I will take the toggle clasp and also put it on my jump ring this way and now I can close it I will grab the jump ring with the pliers and I will close it with the jump ring opener this way. Now let's see the result. So as you can see I have the bead cap. Inside the bead cap I have the crimp with a knot which are no longer visible because I closed the bead cap. Then I have the jump ring and the toggle clasp. So the end of the bracelet is finished. The closure of the bracelet. And now let's continue by adding the beads. So as you can see the thread has the tendency to come out of the needle because the needle has this big space here like this. So now let's begin by adding the beads to the bracelet. I will put a bead cap like this at the end so it looks like a flower but it's a little bit longer and it's narrower here so it creates a um, shape of um, V which um, looks better for the end of the bracelet so it gives gives the shape of the it, it gives an end to our bracelet by uh, this shape of V so I will put first of all the bead cap for the end of my bracelet and then I will start adding the the beads. I will begin with the porcelain beads. Now I will put another cap, a smaller cap. I will put one cap and another cap as you can see they are placed back to back so that they can cover two different beads this way. So as you can see the first bead is covered by the longer bead uh, cap and a small bead cap. I'll put two more bead caps. another porcelain bead 
two more bead caps a porcelain bead a bead cap this way and now let's put a larger bead cap because we are approaching the middle of our bracelet I will use the larger bead cap because of the black beads which are slightly larger than the white beads like this and now we have reached the middle bead which is a metal bead so I chose this metal bead for the center of the bracelet this way and from now on we must be attentive so that the bracelet is symmetrical again I will put a large bead cap the black bead another large bead cap like this And now we'll follow the white china beads And the bead caps and the last bead cap the longer bead cap like this and now we have finished adding the beads to the bracelet all we have to do now is continue by adding the bead cap at the end the bead the uh, the bead end and the toggle clasp so in order to do this I will open this bead end here like this so that I can work inside of the bead end I will put a bead end on my needle like this I'll put one of those crimps on the needle this way and now I can remove the needle now the beads should not be too tight together but also not too loose so they should have a bit of space in between but they should also not be too far away from each other because otherwise uh, the thread will be visible so now I will close the crimp that I have here but taking into consideration that I must leave a bit a millimeter on the thread so that the beads can move a bit and I will press on this crimp like this so that it blocks the 
movement of the thread. And above the crimp, I will make a few knots so that the crimp does not slide from the thread. This is why I opened this bead end here so that I can make those that I have access and can make the knots above the crimp. So, as you can see, I made the first knot above the crimp to block the crimp from moving up and down on the thread. Let's make another knot. And I'll make one last knot and then I will cut the thread. This way. Now, as you can see, I have these knots above my crimp. And I will cut the thread. like this and burn the end of the thread with the lighter and now I can close the bead end so that our crimp and the knot is no longer visible this way I'll take the pliers and close like this and uh, now I will attach the toggle clasp. I will take the jump ring, open the jump ring this way. I'll put the jump ring on the bead end and I will also put the toggle clasp here. like this and now I will close the jump ring this way and we can now open and close the clasp like this and let's see what the finished bracelet looks like so this is our finished bracelet Now let's see what it looks like on the wrist. So this is what the finished bracelet looks like. On the wrist.
So I hope you liked this video and thank you for watching. I will show you how to make a bracelet using nylon cord and some beads. I will use black wooden beads and also turquoise beads. I will need a few tools. First of all, I will need a measuring tape. For the small parts, I can use, if I cannot grab the beads with my fingers, I can use some pincers. And for the cord, for the nylon cord, I will need a pair of scissors and a lighter. So I will need two bits of cord. Um, as you can see, I will cut a bit of cord which is longer than the distance around my wrist. So there should be a bit of extra cord here so that I can open and close the bracelet with the sliding knot. So this cord, the first cord, is about... 14 inches long. 14 inches is about 37 38 centimeters long. The second bit of nylon cord is a shorter cord that I will use in order to make the sliding knot. So, this shorter uh, bit of nylon cord will be about 5 inches long, that is about 13 centimeters long. So this nylon cord will be used for the sliding knot and this one will be used to put the beads on. And now let's start making the bracelet. I will take the uh, nylon cord, the longer nylon cord for the beads and make begin by making a knot at the end of my cord. This way. So I have tightened this knot and this knot here at the end of my cord um, in order to prevent it from opening I will burn it with my lighter like this and this way it will not open anymore. Now I will take the other end of my cord and I will also burn it to make it pointy like this. If it is pointy this way, it will go through my beads. I will take one of those turquoise beads and put the bead at the end of my cord this way. And now I will start putting my beads on the Uh, on the bracelet. So I will alternate turquoise beads and uh, black wooden beads. I will continue putting those beads. So a black bead and a turquoise bead and I will continue putting those beads until I obtain the desired length of my bracelet. And now that I have finished adding the beads, I will put another bead at the end, a uh, turquoise bead at the end of my string and I will make a knot. Like this. So I will tighten this knot this way. I will take the lighter and burn the end of my knot, melt it so that the knot doesn't open anymore. And now I have the ends of the bracelet ornated with some turquoise beads and I will put the other 
beads in the middle of my bracelet this way I will grab the nylon cord at this point here and I will make a knot to mark the point where the beads will stop and I will also make another knot at the end of these beads here this way as you can see I have a knot and at the end of my bracelet beads here and here so that the beads no longer move to the left and to the right now I will put the beads away the turquoise beads and I will create that sliding knot so let's see from a closer distance how to create a sliding knot uh, first of all I will superpose the ends of my bracelet like this and I will take the short nylon cord I will superpose the ends of my nylon cord so that I find the middle of my nylon cord I will put the nylon cord underneath the other two cords and I will make a simple overhand knot like this so I have created a simple knot here and now I will start making the sliding knot I will take one of those ends of my sliding knot put it over the two cords here then I will take the other uh, cord I will put it over the first cord here and then I will put it underneath these two cords here like this and now I will take it out through this loop this way and I will close the first knot of my sliding knot so the first loop was on the left side and now I will put the loop on the right side I will take the other cord put it over this cord put it under the these two cords like this and take it out through this loop here this way and I will close the second knot and again I will make a loop on the left side so the loops will be made once on the right and once on the left side I create the loop I put this other cord over it and take it out through this loop here again I will make the loop on the right side and now as you can see uh, the cord is too short so I will take the scissors first of all I will tighten this last knot I will take the scissors and cut and I will burn with the lighter Now I will turn the knot, the sliding knot. I will also cut this bit of cord and I will burn the end of the cord. And let's see if the sliding knot is moving. So as you can see it's moving so let's close the bracelet like this. And as you can see, this is the finished bracelet. 
Let's see what the bracelet looks like on the wrist. So this is the finished bracelet. This is the sliding knot here. And the bracelet. With turquoise beads and uh, black wooden beads. 